Hi guys, Justin again from chemistrynotes.com and this is video number two from section one. Section one is foundations of chemistry. In the last video we talked primarily about scientific method. We also talked about the macroscopic versus the microscopic view. Uh, this video we're going to start talking about units of measurement. So I'm going to introduce to you something called SI base units or SI fundamental units. Also SI derived units, some of the prefixes that we use in chemistry. And then we're going to start to talk about uncertainty in measurement. All right. I might also throw in a little bit on mass versus weight. So we got a pretty busy video here. This is section one, video number two. So let's get started. Top of page one of today's notes, units of measurement. Measurements are quantitative observations that consist of two parts, a number, for example, four, and a unit, for example, grams. You put those two guys together and you have a measurement, for example, four grams. Now, believe it or not, the unit is actually more important than the number because the unit kind of dials in a little closer than just a plain old number about where you are at. So grams will be more important than the four. A lot of people leave off units. You have to include your units, okay, in every measurement. All right, first bullet point there. For measurements in different parts of the world to be comparable and meaningful, a standard system has been adopted. Now, this system is called the SI system of units. I've heard people say that, oh, the SI system is it's just the metric system today. And uh, I've also heard some people say, well, the SI system is very similar to the metric system with a few a few differences and there's different points of view on this I just basically say to my students the SI system is very very similar to the metric system they have a lot of similarities all right the SI stands for Systeme International that's French it's just an international system of units and there are five fundamental SI units to know fundamental units the SI fundamental units are often called SI base units. So if you ever see SI base units, it means the same thing as SI fundamental units. So what are these five fundamental SI units that I need to know? And these are units that are not derived from every, anybody else. These are original fundamental base units, okay? So I'm gonna make a list of five here. Mass, the unit is kilogram, abbreviated KG. Length, the SI base unit is meter or fundamental unit, abbreviation M. Time, second, abbreviation S, not SEC, S. Temperature Kelvin, abbreviation K, not degrees K, just plain old K, all right? The amount of something, we'll learn a lot about the mole later on. And the abbreviation for the mole is only one letter short, M-O-L, all right? Those are the five fundamental SI units to know. I didn't say that's all the fundamental SI units. There's actually seven. So there's actually seven SI base units or fundamental units, but the other two we don't, we don't use very much in general chemistry, so we can ignore those, all right? Those are uh, the electric current with the unit of ampere and luminous intensity that has a unit of candela. We will use electric current right, the amp in section 17, electrochemistry, but very sparingly, and we would never use luminous intensity, candela. So you got your five fundamental SI units up there, okay? Those are my SI base units. I can get derived units from mixing and matching those base units. And that's what the second bullet point down there is referring to. It says all other units, for example, volume, density, all other units are derived units because they're derived from the seven fundamental or base units. As an example, I had mentioned density, right? We will learn density is mass over volume, right? So mass could be in grams. Your volume would be actually also a derived unit because volume is length cubed, right? So density and volume are two examples of derived units. 
Okay. So with that, I need to mention something. It says there for mass that the base unit is the gram. It says for length, the base unit is the meter. These are relatively large amounts for a topic or subject such as chemistry, right? In chemistry, things weigh on the order of nanograms, micrograms, picograms. They're very, very small. A gram is pretty big. Also, a meter. You ever seen a meter stick or like a yardstick? A meter is, I mean, what if you wanted to know the diameter of a hydrogen atom? You're not going to use the meter. You're going to want to use prefixes, okay? And that's what the top of page two of today's notes are talking about. The fundamental SI units are not always useful. So prefixes are often used. And by useful, I mean, they're not, it's not useful to report the mass of an electron in kilograms, all right? I think I misspoke. Earlier, I, or just now, when I was kind of talking off the top of my head, the SI base unit for mass is not grams, it's kilograms. So there are seven prefixes to know. Here are the larger ones, kilo and mega. There are others. These are the two larger prefixes that you should know. One kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. One megagram, that's a big M there, capital M. One megagram is a million grams or 10 to the six grams. Now, some of the smaller units are deci. Deci is 10, 10 decigrams is one gram. Centi, as an example, 100 centimeters is a meter. Milli, it's a thousand, right? As an example, 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram. Micro, getting smaller and smaller. Micro, one million, it takes one million of those little micrograms to make one gram. Okay, 10 to the six micrograms equals one gram. Even smaller, okay, nano. Nano, 10 to the ninth nanograms is equal to one gram. All right, now we will use these when we start to use dimensional analysis and when we start to do unit conversions and that's coming up very soon, even in this video.